Daily Tech News Show is made possible by you listening right now. Thanks to all of you, including Michelle Sergio, Kirk Stephenson, Miranda Janelle, and brand new Patron Keith. Hey, Keith. Welcome, Keith. Welcome, Keith. Welcome, Keith. Welcome, Keith. On this episode of DTNS, new Chromebooks with new Google AI, Microsoft's new look and new features for Copilot, and robots and drones are teaming up to bring you burritos and other things, probably. This is the Daily Tech News for Tuesday, the 1st of October, 2024. In Los Angeles, I'm Tom Merritt. From Studio Animal House, I'm Sarah Lane. And I'm the show's producer, Roger Chang. I was able to change my calendar while you two introduced yourselves. Sleight of hand. It's October 1st. How the heck? Finally, we can begin celebrating Halloween. (laughs) Right. You know what? If you if you want to get that, um, you know, the uh, pumpkin spice latte, serve yourself. Wait no more. Yeah. Yeah, Because everyone's been holding back. I know Uh, that's irony because everyone has not been holding back as far as I can tell. No. Uh, I think the Halloween candy has been in the grocery store since August, if I remember right. Anyway, (laughs) let's start with some tech news called the quick hits. Microsoft began rolling out its latest update to Windows 11, a.k.a. Windows 11 24H2, which just means the Windows 11 update for the second half of 2024. Among the new features are support for the Linux sudo command inside Windows, support for Wi-Fi 7, support for 7ZXIP, and .tar file compression. You can also reverse the mouse scroll direction in settings now, instead, in, uh, instead of having to... D- edit that in Windows registry to do that. The rollout begins and will come to all Windows machines over the next several weeks. Microsoft has also stopped making its HoloLens to headsets. Existing users still getting security updates until the end of 2027, but that's kind of it. OpenAI Dev Days is always a fun time for OpenAI. Sometimes they lose their CEO a couple of days later. Sometimes, like this year, their CTO steps down a few days before. But they always announced features for developers, and this year is no exception. Uh, They announced that you, as a developer, can now more easily integrate OpenAI into your products. Uh, Real-time API will let devs include near real-time conversational abilities, uh, the the voice stuff that's in ChatGPT now, in your own apps, with six custom voices that are actually different from the ones that users have in ChatGPT. Devs can also use their own images and text to fine-tune models, you know, train it on their own stuff without having to give it to OpenAI, and use larger models to fine-tune smaller models in order to save money, because the smaller models don't cost as much to operate. You might not realize that Ashley Furniture is the number one furniture retailer in the U.S. It's notable now that Samsung has teamed up with Ashley Furniture for smart home products. The first Samsung Smart Things showroom in an Ashley Furniture store will open this week in Brentwood, Tennessee. That's outside Nashville. Somebody's listening right now lives near this Ashley furniture. Please go visit it and Please report back. It. Yeah. Take let fo- us know. Take photos, take vids, pick some vids. Indeed. Or it doesn't happen. You have to do it or it won't happen. It's on you. (laughs) A startup called Liquid AI has debuted its first multimodal model, the Liquid Foundation Model, or LFM. And you might say, okay, there's dozens of these things out there. What makes this one special? This one does not use the T in GPT. It is not a transformer model like pretty much all the other generative models out there. Instead, it uses deep learning models combined with new mathematical formulations to make it more efficient. In fact, they believe their method is so much more efficient that it can outperform Meta's Llama 3.2-1.2b and Microsoft's Phi 1.5 and also uses less memory. The models are available through Liquid's Inference Playground, Lambda Chat, or Perplexity AI, and are still in the preview stage. A full launch event is planned for October 23rd. Sonos announced an additional one-year warranty for products that are still under warranty, which is a promise to release updates more gradually with a chance for customer feedback and an opt-in program to try experimental features. Planned hardware releases will resume in the coming weeks, starting with the Sonos Arc Ultra and the Sub 4. And everything is forgiven? Maybe not. Yeah. 
All right, we have Microsoft announcements about Copilot to get to, but let's start with Google's two new Chromebooks, the Samsung Galaxy Chromebook Plus and the Lenovo Chromebook Duet 11. They uh, they come, well, one of them does. The Samsung one comes with the new Quick Insert button, which gives immediate access to Gemini features. The new button will replace the Search Launcher button on Chromebooks going forward. Pressing it will bring up features like Help Me Write, and eventually image generation, plus recently visited websites, file search, GIF and emoji selection, all informed by Gemini. Chromebook Plus models in general are getting more Gemini features like Help Me Read, which does summaries of the text you're looking at, Live Translate, which creates translated captions in real time, and Recorder, which creates transcripts from spoken lectures, interviews, or other conversations. There's also a feature called Welcome Recap, that launches when you power on and reminds you what you were doing when you powered off. The Samsung Chromebook Plus is a 15.6-inch OLED display, 13 hours of battery life starting at $699, and the Chromebook Duet 11, which again does not have the quick insert button, but does have a stylus for its 10.9-inch touchscreen and 12 hours of battery life, starts at $340. Both of them are available later this month. Uh, we were talking before the show, and Roger uh, was pointing out that you know Chromebooks have become the de rigueur education model. Uh, they're a bargain model. A lot of people People keep using them because they're lightweight, uh, and now they're they're bringing some more of the Gemini stuff into it too. You know, one of the uh, the things that um, as we keep getting these tools to you know have like the little assistant, you know, like you know what's two plus two type stuff, um, you know, but but more and more advanced. One of the things I, I've, I've been wondering about is how does this affect kids in school? You know, it, it, if you're if you're working and you're you know, you're you it, you're you, you know what your job is. Uh, maybe you can use something uh, something that is, you know, Gemini, ChatGPT, whatever, um, um, you know, at the ready to help you do your job better. OK, you know, if, if the tool works for you, great. But what about like young kids who just sort of like, you know, it's it's this is very much the like Texas, Texas Instruments conversation of like, well, should people, you know, should kids be given calculators where they're not going to, you know, do the math themselves type thing? This feels like just more of that. Like so, are you worried that Gemini uh, makes it not not? Let's forget cheating because you know uh, teachers can can crack down. Yeah, on that, yeah. But, no, I'm but not like, even it talking makes it too, about cheating. Too easy. It just makes it too easy for them to use I mean, these kinds I of tools to get answers. I don't answers. know if it's a problem that it's too easy. You know, yeah, like I don't, I don't know if it is. Yeah, you know, if if you know how to use a tool to get an answer and the answer is correct, I don't know. I mean, I don't consider that cheating. You have access to a tool. Um, yeah. Do all kids have access to the same tool? That maybe is the you know the next conversation I have. But obviously, um, the Chromebooks are not just for classrooms. You know, for all ages. But I I'm into it. I yeah. I I really think that you know if if you if you if you need some help uh, and you know that something can it can. Um, mathematically just deduce a thing that would take you a little bit more time than you have. I, I, I'm, I'm all in on it. Well, just like calculators, I think it's on teachers to be able to show how to use the tools properly to assist you, how to understand how the tools get their answers when they can't be relied on, when they can be relied on, uh, and that sort of thing. I, I also yeah. think, you know, it's, it's not like Chromebooks are only for education or only for children. I right, think that, right, that starts exactly. to become uh, a, a, a trope out there as well. These are great prices for very capable laptops. I have a Chromebook I've been using for almost 10 years, and it's still great. Uh, because the lightweight OS continues to get updated. I'm not going to get the button, but I am going to get some of this Gemini stuff. Nothing that's going to work on device, but that's not how Chromebooks work anyway. Everything's in the cloud. So I'll be able to take advantage of a lot of this stuff. Uh, they're very long-lived laptops as long as you have a good internet connection, right? Which, yeah, granted, that may be an issue in, in some situations, but more and more people do have a good enough internet connection to be able to use this sort of thing. 
Um, well, let's talk about what we can use robotics for. <laughs> Serve Robotics, uh, which makes the little coolers on wheels that roll around on sidewalks for food delivery in some urban areas, definitely some college campuses, is partnering with Wing Aviation, which makes drones that can deliver the same kinds of things, but through the air. Serve Robots make the most of their deliveries within about two miles of the restaurant that they're coming from. Partnership with Wing would potentially expand that to six miles, and here's how this would work. They'll use the Wing Delivery Network, which uses otter loader stations, then serves robots pick up the delivery from the restaurant, take it to one of those otter loader stations, then the Wing drone picks it up and delivers it to its destination. The service is starting, uh, it's, it's a very small rollout, uh, in Dallas, Texas, um, in the next few months. Yeah, we talked about the wing stuff uh, previously on DTNS. I don't even remember how long ago now, but, you know, the autoloader in those situations were going to be installed in, like, parking lots for retailers. So the retailer would come out, you know, one of the employees would come out and put the item for delivery in the autoloader, and then the autoloader would autoload it into the drone, the drones actually can lower the deliveries to the ground for the recipient, right? Because they can they can hover. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, so what this is doing is pretty genius. It's saying, what if we just take the employee out of the out of the equation and we have the delivery robot pop over? <laughs> Obviously, it's going to have to authenticate that this is the right autoloader station and the right delivery robot, and then it can pop open its case, and the autoloader can automatically grab the the stuff <laughs> and pull it out. I don't know if you're going to need humans to assist that part of the process. I'm curious if you I might. Don't, I don't think, uh, I mean, I, I think in design, you don't need humans to do this. I do, I do wonder, and I, I think uh, a lot of people out there being like, well, but okay, it depends on what I order. Like, did I order a pizza and now like it, you know, it's six miles away and there's a drone and a, you the know. The drone's going to whip that thing to you. It's going to be hotter than any other possible delivery could be, right? <laughs> Probably. Yeah. I mean, hey, you know, you've got to, you know, um, put everything in foil and, you know, hope for the best type thing. But I saw a serve robotics uh, robot going down, um, not not my street that I live on, but an adjacent street, a, a, a well-traveled street this morning. And I was like, oh my God. <laughs> and like, it was sort of like in the morning, it was sort of busy. A lot of people are out and about, you know, buses come down this road, you know, and people were just like, what is that? Ah! And, you know, I've Were they seen screaming, it really? I've seen I've seen it before. Well, you know, not screaming, but just like, what it's is like that? Like, movie. who's like, running yeah. this? You know, mm -hmm. kind of thing. Or, or where I'm like, it's OK. <laughs> It'll be fine. It's going to somebody probably at USC. But it hasn't um, been in your area before is what. what not that I've seen. Not not that I've seen. No, certainly yeah, yeah. not. Um, you know, I said that about Waymo, too. And now it's like every third car is a Waymo. Um, but um but yeah, I, 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 I love these guys at the same time. It's like, yeah, if you want to, if I'm, if I'm sitting at home and I want to order again, let's call it a pizza and that pizza place that is my favorite place is six miles away. I will assume that it will come to me kind of cold. Why? Well, because that's only uh, like six minutes away. But but no, not what with the little with the little robots on the street on the sidewalk. They oh, have to like yeah. you know. No, no, the robots. That's why they no, don't deliver more no, than no. two miles Fly, away from flying, the restaurant. Yeah, flying I'm, actually makes this like yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah. I'm gonna get this okay within half an hour type thing. And well, you should get it faster, right? So if you if you order from uh, like Uber Eats or DoorDash, right, it's gonna it's gonna get cooked. Let's give that fifteen minutes, right? Then it's gonna get put in the car, and the car has to go through traffic. So yeah, six, yeah. I say six minutes, as if I don't live in Los Angeles, where six miles can be thirty minutes. Um, but maybe it's still hot by the time you get it in forty five minutes. It's not impossible. I mean, this, with a little robot on the street, I'm like, I don't know. 
Uh, no, no, you no. Know, like, I don't even want to do that to the little robot. With the door, the, the yeah. little robots on the street don't go more than two miles. So if you try to order that pizza and you're six miles away, it's going to say, sorry, we can't deliver it to you. Now they can, and they can get it to you faster than the DoorDash, right? Well, yeah. No, that's my point is, you know, you fly through the air to give me my pizza. I'm in. The problem is, I don't think you can do this in our neighborhoods. You have to have a place with an auto loader, so and you need a lot of space. You also, you know, in an apartment building, uh, they're going to have to do your urban areas. Is not something I don't think Wing is is figured out entirely how to operate in yet. They they've they've got some ideas, but they're using Dallas because they need a place with lots of space, and they're going to use suburban Dallas. I'm telling you, they're not totally. going to use downtown Dallas. A hundred percent. Yeah, yeah. I'm trying to think of like where would a drone. Um, I've never had drone delivery, but let's say I tried, like, where would the drone land? You could land, I guess, on the sidewalk outside well, they my don't. house. They don't land. They hover and then they lower <laughs> your package to you. Well, yeah, that's what I mean so by they, land. They could, they could do that in front of your, your apartment, I guess. They could. Um, <laughs> You're not yours in specifically. But knowing, knowing my neighborhood, I'm like, mm, well, shouldn't stay out there that long or someone will take it real quick. Um, well, yeah, they, they do wait to lower it until you acknowledge like, yes, I'm here. Yeah, like Please I'm here yeah, yeah, yeah. kind of thing. Yeah, I, I don't know. I, I want to try it. I, I'm, I'm excited about it. Um, but uh, but yeah, the whole sort of like the drone future that we've been promised is so much slower than I thought it would be. Real slow to get here, yeah. Yeah, like, you know, even five years ago, it was like, okay, well, we're going to have drone taxis, you know, any day now. And it's like, eh, you know, there's some novelty stuff right now, but no one's flying in the air to go from point A to point B. And that's not how our stuff is coming to us either. Well, uh, same goes for Dallas as goes for Nashville. Uh, we got a couple of months before this takes off, but if you do use this combo of serve and wing to get your burrito delivered to you, uh, we want to know about it. Feedback at dailytechnewsshow.com. In fact, you could also tell us on social network, share some photos. You can get in touch with DTNS at DTNS show on X, uh, at DTNS show at mstdn.social on Mastodon, at Daily Tech News Show on TikTok, and DTNS Picks, DTNS PIX on Instagram and Threads. Microsoft announced a bunch of features for Copilot, its implementation of large language models uh, across web, mobile, and desktop, including the design. Uh, you can now see the new Copilot design on the web, iOS, Android, and Windows. You can DM Copilot in WhatsApp. The Verge's Tom Warren called the new design unlike anything I've seen from Microsoft before. I think he meant it in a positive way, too. Uh, it's, it's somewhat tile-based. But it's not like Windows Phone or Windows 8 were. Have you have you taken a look and do you have an impression of, of what you think of the new Copilot look? I've it's taken a look. Fit. Yeah, I've taken a look. I I you know, <laughs> it's a little weird. Um, but like not weird in a bad way. I I feel like I know what Microsoft is going for here. Yeah. Uh it's 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 cards. I cards is probably better than tiles, so you don't think about Windows 8. Uh it's it's like a card interface. There's also Copilot Voice. Copilot Voice lets you speak conversationally to Copilot. Uh it adds four synthetic voices you can talk to. It can respond to your tone. You can interject at any point. It sounds like open eyes adv advanced voice mode, but Microsoft only said that it's using the latest voice models that it fine-tuned itself. It did not cop to this being the advanced voice mode. It is available now in English in the US, Canada, Australia, the UK, and and New Zealand. Yeah. Uh, the more that an assistant can be something that doesn't, like, you know, need a wake word. Yeah. Where, you don't have you to know, think about how to talk to it. Right. You're just sort of like, hey, I need help. Okay, cool. Oh, you gave me an answer that wasn't quite right. Let me rephrase that. Okay. Yeah. And you can interrupt it too. That That's the open AI thing that's kind of like cool. a friend. Yeah. Like yeah. a friend. You know, a trusted friend that is smart. <laughs> that's, that's, that's the whole thing, right? It's like it, this is supposed to be like, wh who's my smartest friend? Wouldn't that be nice if they were right next to me right now? Yeah. And then, Your trusted you know, friend who's fun to be with. Fun, well, well, I don't know about fun, but definitely <laughs> smart. So, uh, so yeah. 
Copilot Vision is a new feature that lets the paying users, the Copilot Pro users, see, uh, let, let's Copilot see what you're viewing in the Edge browser. So you had to be a paying user, you have to be using Edge, and you have to be on a limited list of popular websites. They're not letting this work for anything paywalled uh, or sensitive content. You'd think like your health records, anything like that. But if you're just, you know, on Ashley Furniture's website, let's say, uh, you could type in at Copilot in the address bar and then ask your question about any of the images or text on the page. Like, do you think this would look good in my apartment? is one of the examples they gave. It's opt-in and any data related to your session is deleted when you're done. They're not storing that to train or anything. Uh, again, it is launching for select pro users now through Copilot Labs. So you have to opt into labs to do it. Feels very, you know, Google Gemini, um, you know, going head to head here. Yeah, um, you know, the, you know, we're going to get a lot what, of that in this the list of announcements, I think. Yeah. Like, like, what do you do inside your browser? How can the browser help you? Is it just, you know, do you just search for things using keywords or do you, you know, uh, dive in a little bit farther, which I think uh, the co-pilot vision is designed to do. Yeah. And it can be proactive and suggest things to you about the web page you're looking for. Uh, so it, it seems like it's a little bit narrow in that you have to be paying, you have to opt in you have to use edge, but if you fall into that camp, it might be pretty useful. Yeah. Uh, think deeper is a specialized model for complex things. This is also for the paying users, Copilot pro users. It uses open AI's models and it takes time to consider a request. It provides step-by-step -step answers. It sounds almost identical to OpenAI's O1 model, the one that's not great at everything, but really good at reasoning. Uh, Microsoft would not confirm that. It just said that it fine-tuned the service itself, but it did give examples that are very uh, O1-like. Uh, analyzing the cost of a home project, uh, solving a tough math problem. These are available in Australia, Canada, New Zealand, the UK, and the US. I, I got to say, I mean, uh, you know, comparing it to open AI, it's like, how is this not chat GPT? Yeah, it's just through Copilot, right? That's that's yeah. the difference. That, <laughs> is that, right, right, yeah, exactly. You, and, and Microsoft's advantage is, you know, you can now use it in all of the Microsoft product products, uh, whereas yeah. chat GPT, you can only use in the open AI interface. So I, I don't know why they're being so cagey about this and saying it's OpenAI's model, but we've modified it. It's not just the O1 model other than product differentiation. Uh, I th I this feels much very much for somebody who's very entrenched in, you know, the Microsoft product ecosystem. All of this stuff is for that, for sure. Well, yeah, yeah. 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 But but this even even more, it's like, yeah, like, why not ChatGPT? It's like, well, because you're using other Microsoft products I already pull and they're going to be built yeah. into this. I want to pull things from Excel and my teams and blah, 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 right. blah, blah. Yeah. Right. And there's a button. It's easy. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Copilot Daily is a new feature that reads you news, weather, and if you want, reminders for your tasks. So it's kind of like your morning podcast tailored exactly to you. So like, uh, here's the news of the day. It's going to be sunny. And don't forget, you have a meeting at six or whatever. Uh, <laughs> that is available in the UK and the US. And if you're wondering, publishers will be paid for any of their content that appears in the news and weather portion. Uh, Reuters, Axel Springer, Hearst, and the Financial Times have already signed up. All right. Um, kind of feels like what I do with Alexa in the morning. Uh, it is. Very when similar. I wake up. The, so, the yeah. proposition is that this will be better because that one is fairly clunky and this will be tailored to you and your tastes. We'll see. Your mileage may vary on that, mm -hmm, but that's the, mm -hmm. that's the pitch anyway. Yeah. No, I, um, I, I like stuff like this. Yeah, yeah. This one's kind of nifty. It, it may or may not work as well as people want it to, but it's not bad. Copilot Discover gives you tips on the ways to use Copilot <laughs> based on what Microsoft services you use. So it's supposed to be tailored to you as well. Uh, you can also enable personalization as a setting in Copilot, which will then take into account your past preferences and interactions across a bunch of different tools. Uh, this can be turned off in Windows settings. It is not coming to the EU or the UK. Well, sorry for y'all, um, but uh, but yeah, uh, yeah. This discover tool, <laughs> you know, it's it's uh, you can probably figure things out. It's a very smart clippy. Right, right, right. right yeah. yeah.
Yeah. Uh, all US users will see Bing generative search now. Uh, it generates a summary in response to a query. This is just basically Google's AI overviews. And then new features coming to the Copilot Plus PCs. So these are the ones that have the specialized processors. Most of the ones you can buy right now are Qualcomm, but there's also some Intel and AMD ones showing up. Uh, the first of the new features to come to Copilot Plus PCs will let you search for photos in File Explorer by text that describes what's in the image. Right now, you could do a search for photos in File Explorer, but it'll look at the metadata and it'll look at the file name. This will actually look at the image itself. And so even if it doesn't say Seven the Dog anywhere in the file name or the metadata, it'll see Seven it'll the Dog. know, oh, yeah. there's the dog right there. Uh, that functionality will come later to the main Windows search and to settings for things other than photos. So if you want to be like, how do I set up my headphones properly, was the example they gave. In settings, it'll give you the proper settings. Uh, there's also a feature called click to do, which is like circle to search. You press the Windows key and the left click on the mouse, and you can select images or text. You'll then get a menu of possible actions you could take, like edit in photos, copy, save, share, etc. cetera. Uh, Windows insiders will begin to be able to test this on Copilot Plus PCs this month, followed by a wider rollout to other folks in November. And Microsoft's also adding generative fill and erase to Microsoft Paint. Yeah, so we're getting we're getting uh, PCs that are smarter than ever. I, you know, I've got no issues with this. You you don't have a problem with the way it's trained or any of those those ethical questions that people are always asking or or the energy use of processing some of the stuff if it's not on device. In well, some yeah, I mean, energy use for sure. I mean, that's a question we should all be asking ourselves. But otherwise, no. Um. I, I'm really, I, you know, I'm not one of those people who's like, well, if you didn't do anything wrong, why are you worried <laughs> yeah. kind of thing. But I, I, I feel like, you know, the AI training models, I am not personally worried that my, my use is going to somehow implicate me. <laughs> <laughs> in the future. Um, some people don't feel as comfortable as I do about that. That's fine. I'm, you know, I'm kind of more of a, you know, I'm a beta program person. Like, yeah, get me in there. You know, let's see how it goes. Um, even if uh, things roll back later. But, uh, but yeah, I think, um, I think Copilot plus PCs um, are, are, uh, they're, uh, they're very attractive. You know, they're, they're, they're nice systems. And the, this whole idea of like Microsoft is kind of, you know, in my head and helping me with things. Um, you don't have to use that. that. Yeah. And I think it, they did a better job of, of stating like you have control, you can turn these things off. Some of them are opt out when they maybe yeah. should be opt in or whatever, but uh, you know, are emphasizing when they're not going to use any of the data, getting rid of it. They're, they're trying to be more sensitive to those kinds of concerns. Right. All right, folks, let's check out what's in our mailbag. Let's do it. If you are going to the airport and you really wish you had a faster way to do that, Chris Christensen has new uh, as a new tidbit about air taxis that could provide just this. This is Chris Christensen from Amateur Traveler with another Tech in Travel Minute. I missed this, but it came out in June that a company called Joby has received FAA approval for an app for an online service for an air taxi. Now, they are still developing the air taxi, and they haven't received approval for that yet. So when I head to the airport tomorrow, I'm probably just taking an Uber, but at least it's one step closer. Will sometime in the future we call an air taxi that can go 200 miles per hour and gets us there directly? Maybe. We'll see. This is Chris Christensen from Amateur Traveler. Thank you, Chris. Patrons, stick around for the extended show Good Day Internet. CNN is trying to paywall again. This time it has to work. And they're not building this one about video. This one's about text, at least to start with. Uh, we'll also look at the Netflix top 10 lists and see if any of us are watching any of the things they say are popular. Stick around for all of that. You can catch our show live Monday through Friday, 4 p.m. Eastern, 21, uh, 20 hundred UTC is where we do this live. And you can find out more at dailytechnewsshow.com slash live. We're back tomorrow to own it all again, talking about Epic's new strategy to woo game developers with Scott Johnson. Talk to you then. The DTNS family of podcasts, helping each other 
understand. Diamond Club hopes you have enjoyed this program. <laughs>